Welcome to today's video everybody. We're starting off at Sidex Japan. We've already got Steve in the 350Z getting some work done for me. This time I didn't break anything. Yeah. It was just a part that failed. <laughs> we got a brand new Willwood from GK Tech. They sent one out really fast. It's arrived in like three days. This was the one that failed. So uh, we're gonna get them switched out. They're identical. The only difference is this is a nice, uh, like a gray one in comparison. It looks like they're both the same size piston. This is a uh, 0.62 and this is a 0.265 so pretty much the same thing I'm gonna put that in and then we should have a working hydro get that all bled and hopefully uh, we don't have any more issues with that but today's main purpose is to go over everything on the Z and make sure it's all ready I have an Okajuku event with Okachan coming up and I want to make sure that he can take it for a drive and really enjoy it so we're just going over and triple checking all the work that we did. Um, I wanna make sure that everything's all good on the diff as well. Um, I did notice that one of the bolts was getting loose, so I'm gonna probably throw it up on the hoist, triple check that, and we'll probably Loctite some stuff there because things are moving around there with some solid mounts there now, so we gotta make sure nothing moves. The car is now up on the lift and that's because we needed to switch over the calipers. When I installed these, they came marked as left and right on the calipers and I didn't think anything of it. So I put the left on the left and the right on the right. Forgetting that these are dual calipers and generally in that case, see the little L marking here? Um, generally in dual caliper cases, you put your left on the right and the right on the left. Only the, the one for the hydro though, so that the bleeder valve is at the top. Now, we know that that wasn't the issue um, when we were trying to bleed it initially. It was that our master had failed because we put in another master and it worked totally fine. Just uh, this one here that was lying around the shop, I think like just some random AliExpress one that they had here as a spare. And that worked perfectly fine. So we know that that definitely was the master, but we just want to rule out any issues while bleeding. So we've switched the sides over so the bleeder is at the top of the caliper. And that'll just make sure that all the air is coming out here and we won't get anything trapped. While Steve's been working on that, I had a look at our bumper. And uh, if you guys remember when we first tested this, the bumper started melting and touching on this. And that is because one of the little uh, holders under there had like completely fallen off. So this side was sagging down a bit touching the exhaust. So I went and just did a good old uh, bumper tuck mod, put in some uh, self tappers in there. And I have to say, why didn't I do this sooner? It looks so much better like that. Look at that. And we get a nice clean shot now at the diff. Hard to see with the lighting like right there behind us, but it looks really nice. So it's been a little bit of time now, but look, we got the hydro mounted in here. I want to make like a custom little boot to go here just to like tidy it up and make it even more nice for a streetcar. We've got the hazard button here and everything. And the only thing is I either have to modify my current head unit or I'm going to try and find one of those double din ones that only has the single din rear one up the top. If you guys actually know the model that um, that particular thing is, the double din with the single din top mounted um, unit, please let me know. I would love to get my hands on one of those. I don't care if it's American or Australian, that's fine. As long as it has, you know, all the good stuff like Bluetooth and whatnot. But it'd be cool to keep the Japanese one because then I can watch Japanese TV while I'm driving. So if I can modify that one and make it so that it just clearances the cap a tiny bit, then we'll be fine. Like I literally just need to clearance it like a little bit. So I'm gonna try and pull the unit apart and see if there's anything behind there. And if there's nothing behind the bottom of the head unit, I will cut that out and it'll give me a few millimeters to mount it in there and then we'll get Japanese TV in this thing, which will be so cool. My goal is to try and make this thing look as clean and as nice as a streetcar inside, but a party machine when you take it to the track. So that's my goal. And this, very nice touch. It's so good now, like this thing locks up real quick. We might go test it a little bit, but yeah, she's done. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> and uh, if any of you guys actually are interested in maybe a 180SX missile, or maybe you want this car and want to fix it up, Steve's gonna be selling this soon. He's uh, in the process of putting the engine in and getting everything looking good. I think you said you wanted 1.2 mil for it with no paint, right? Yeah, yeah, no paint. No paint. So with the current paint that's on here, 1.2 million yen. So if any of you guys are interested, you can hit up Sidex Japan and pick this thing up. This is uh, something Steve's trying to sell because he needs to raise money because he's got another kid on the way. You're gonna be a dad for the second time now. Yes, second hey. time. Girl or boy, you know yet? 
No. Not I yet? I think not boy. <laughs> you, <laughs> you think not boy? No, boy. Oh no. <laughs> I hope you guys don't mind us talking about kids and uh, family stuff on the channel. It's definitely something that's gonna be in the future for sure. And uh, while May's not pregnant yet, keyword being yet there, we are looking at growing our family soon. So that's kind of also really exciting. It's now the next day and I'm at the shop. It's a little bit late because <laughs> I'm in the middle of drift prep for Okajuku on the S15. The biggest issue is I, the green wheels have just been a temporary fix up until now. And I really would like to run the Koenig Hypergrams. So you guys know I got a bunch of these here and uh, I'm thinking of changing it up for the S15s. So I'm probably gonna use all the Koenigs on the 350Z um, just because that seems like the most like fitting choice. It's a black car, the gunmetal gray will look super sick with them. But unfortunately the offsets without the right spaces are just not gonna work unless we're running the 17s on the front. But I really wanna run 18s on the front. We might mess around with 17s in the future to see how that feels and handles. But these 18s are 9.5 plus 35 and I really need a plus 25 for it to fit and clear. Or I need like at least a 10 mil spacer but these studs are super small, so I can't really get that to work. So we might run with like a 25 mil spacer or something in the future, and that'll bring us back out to the same spec that these wheels are. Um, but yeah, these are a plus 25 um, 9J instead of 9.5J. So these actually fit really nice on the front. So we're gonna go with the Advans, um, the RGD, to the RGD wheels. These are one of my favorite old school Advan Yokohama wheels. So these are gonna be going on the front for now. Might be reminding you of some old Skyline Day stuff because I used to run the Advan uh, DG, um, RG, what is wrong with me? RGDs on the rear um, of that thing whenever we drive it. So we're gonna put the gold ones in the front and I've got my favorite front tires right now. I used to run the Valino, oh, they're over here by the time machine. I used to run the Valino, um, I still run actually the 08Rs on my S15, but I started experimenting with a little less grippier front tire on the Chaser and I really liked it. So I went with the 08C um, for the 350Z because I want to start trying to do some backies and this is what I run on the Chaser. A little bit of a harder compound than the 08Rs. I believe these are a 300 tread wear and they just kind of seem to like scuff and like slide a little bit when you really throw it in and it's super nice and easy to control. Um, as in on the S15, just the way that the body feels and stuff like that, I really like the 08Rs on the front but I do run a little bit of a higher pressure in these. Anyways, and I think the tread wear on these, the 08Rs, is somewhere in the 200s or maybe even like 180. I'm trying to see if it's written on the wheel here, but these are pretty old, so it's hard to see. Yeah, so these are a tread wear of 200. So, a um, <laughs> little bit of a stiffer rubber, I guess, or not as grippy and soft on these ones. So I'm gonna put those on the Advan RGD wheels. It's gonna feel sick. We're gonna keep the green ones in the back because I've already got some KR20 Kenders on there and I'm just gonna probably get a set of already mounted ones on the RGD, the black RGDs over there and throw those in the car too. We're not gonna be able to fit much in this trunk but as long as we've got two pairs, I think we'll be good. So hear me out here. I know I said I wanted to use Koenigs on the 350Z but just look at this. This looks incredible. Now, I know right now I have the black ones on the back, but could you imagine if we had a gold set on here? Man, that slaps. That slaps so good. Oh, this is giving me vibes like back to when Okachan had a 350Z um, and uh, it was a fully sponsored like Nismo race car 350Z. And um, it came, I think there was a few pictures I saw w with these exact gold, Advan racing wheels. Now obviously his was white with a bunch of pink um, livery stuff on there, but it looks so good. The Advan RGDs really are my favorite wheel. They look so good on pretty much everything. <sighs> yeah, I need to hunt around on Yahoo Auctions for another set of these because I need another gold set. Um, they're just so nice. And those are beat up because they used to be on the rear of my Skyline and get drifted on a whole bunch. The shop is an absolute mess right now, by the way. When we finished getting the S15 running the other day, we just kind of left it and I went up to Ebisu, so we'll get all that sorted out. But this looks so good and I cannot wait to drive this thing tomorrow at Okajuku with this setup. 
Um, I got a few more things to touch up on the interior just to make sure like the hydro clears and whatnot. So I'm gonna work on that now, but uh, we'll get the fluoro wheel back on the back here, put the black RGDs in the trunk. We'll pull out all the factory like spare tire stuff and everything so we have space. We should be able to at least get, you know, a pair on there to the track and a pair in the trunk. So at least we can have a bit of fun, but I'm really excited to see what these uh, zero eight C's are gonna feel like in the front of the Z. It just looks so good, guys. Damn. It's been a fair bit of time now, but everything is back together and check this out. We got the head unit all in there, fits perfect. There's clearance here now. Everything is exactly how I want it. Look, hang on, the TV's already on. Even got the hazard button working now. Way too excited about this. This is awesome. I disconnected um, all the ABS stuff as well. So now we shouldn't have any issues with ABS and everything should just permanently be disabled here now. I'm excited to drive this tomorrow. We actually have like proper traction control off. Man, the only other thing is I have to cut a particular wire to the ECU that sends the brake, um, like the brake pedal signal to it. Um, if it's difficult to get the ECU out, I'll try and do that at the event tomorrow. If it's difficult, I'll just unplug the brake pedal light, um, plug again, and that'll just be super easy. Okajuku with the Z. Before we go and take that thing out though, Okachan wants to let me drive his Nigoki. This is the second car in his fleet. Nigoku just means like second machine. The second Yashio factory machine, number two. Look at this beast. Mm -hmm. Love the look of this. And then uh, this is the lesson car, which we call Yongoki, number four. So Okachan wants me to take this for a drive. It's got a bunch of power and pretty crazy angle kit but as you can see this thing is stripped out usually he uses this for time attack carbon roof and everything super light but uh, a really fun car to drive so I'm gonna set up a GoPro real quick and uh, we'll take you guys for a ride while I go grab the GoPro look how beautiful the weather is today absolutely amazing and Okachan is just enjoying the Sun right now baking it's been a while since I've been in an S15. Oh wow. This seat, the steering wheel's pretty far away from me and my legs are already touching. This seat is adjusted really weird. It's like on a massive angle. Now nah, we'll do what we can.
I think my biggest issue is the seating position. I'm so tilted back. My arms are kind of far away from the wheel and my, the wheel's like getting caught on my legs a lot. Like me, when I use the brake, if my leg's not like bent down, it hits the wheel. So it's just set up for small Japanese guys. But the car like handles really cool. If I was sitting well and I could have the steering wheel where I needed it, I could really swing this for sure. I'm gonna ask Okachan okay, if I can do a couple more laps, but this thing is really like, like how do, I, I'm trying to think of the word in English, but like it's super aggressive when you flick it. It's really cool. So that was a lot of fun driving Okachan's okay, Nigoki car. Unfortunately, the seating position just doesn't work for my body type, so it was a real big struggle. But um, the car felt really light and agile, and I love the way that you could really flick it. Um, I just spoke to him a little bit and I said if ever he lets me, you know, put a, put the seat, a seat in and a rail that will work with me, I'd love to drive it for a day and uh, he's down for that idea. So maybe in the future we'll do that. Maybe we'll do like a special like one hour long video where we go through and do like a driving and full review on each one of his cars. I think that'll be super cool to do in the future. But um, for now it's time to do Z stuff. So I've been playing a bunch around with tire pressure, damper settings and I think I got the car dialed pretty well. I've added about about two to three mil of toe in as well in the rear and we've got some pretty burnt like Ken KR20s on here right now and I'm running them at like 1.2 bar of pressure. The car feels pretty dialed right now so we're gonna go out and send it. So we're gonna go out and do a few laps and see how this thing handles. I think you're gonna find that it is very different from when we tested it at Ebi suit a while back. Definitely still need to do something with the stock seat, but for now this is perfect. And it does everything we need it to. Now check this out, I've got a lot of grip and speed into this right now. We'll do a second and then a third gear entry. We can add a bit more tire pressure now. I think I got the toe in perfect. feels so good like insanely good I want to know what it would feel like with uh, grippier tires instead of like some KR20s like if I put some Valino like 08Cs on or maybe even some 08Rs with higher tire pressure I think this thing would be really fast <sighs> the best thing is is when I'm done doing a couple runs I just crank the AC and chill in the car and cool down on a hot summer day like today You guys will not believe what just happened. So I was looking for some scrap tires because all I have are these crappy triangles that have no grip and I want to try and run a high grip tire. So Okachan was like, go have a look through some of the ones we've already taken off. And I found like, a, you know, there's about a quarter of tread left on these. But then we noticed that the wheels were the same RGDs as the front. And I can't find these anywhere on Yahoo Auctions in the specs that I need. These are 10.5J plus 25. They fit the well perfect. And I was like, Okachan, bro, help me out. I'm looking for these wheels. And he was like, yeah, you can have them. So we got a full set of gold RGD original wheels now. Thing looks freaking sick. 
Dude, I, w I was thinking I was gonna hunt around on Yahoo Auctions for a set of these wheels, like for another pair, for ages, but perfect spec and everything. Who would have known the S15 spec that Okachan runs is perfect for a Z2? Look at this, guys. Black Z with the gold Advent RGT wheels. I think it's been like 15 years since they made these, so very kind of like period correct. I love it. Well, let's go see how these uh, high grip tires feel. I got them at two bar. Let's see how this thing feels now. Okay, so it's really gripped up in the rear now, like crazy. some toe out now <laughs> maybe just a bit more air pressure but they'll heat up and then it'll feel better i think definitely can't do third gears with this i don't think not yet anyways is next level. I'm never putting anything but something like this level of grip on the rear. The car's fast. Um, it has really good traction. I feel it's pushing the front a bit too much, so I need to get rid of some like get rid of the 300 tread wear and maybe move to something a bit softer. The only thing I would change is the diff ratio. I think I have the stock 3.5. I'd like a 3.9 if possible, just that little bit better for third gear entries. But car feels so dialed right now, it's ridiculous. I'm gonna get Okachan to jump in and see what he thinks. So we got Okachan in the Z. Let's see what he thinks of it. gonna buy a Z2. Z brothers!
すごいね。音がいいね。ねとは<笑> Just saying how good it sounds. <笑> so I guess o k a c h a n s buying a Z now. Kao? Kao, Kao, Kao. He's buying a Z. <笑>ピンクするピンクする<笑> ?Yeah. <笑> It's gonna make it pink. So, time warping ahead. I'm now heading home. I actually left a little bit early so that I could get ahead of traffic and get home at a decent time.、Um, unfortunately, living in Yokohama means I have to drive through Tokyo, and peak hour traffic sucks through Tokyo. As you can imagine, there's more people living in the city of Tokyo than the entire country of Australia.、Um, and yeah, I mean, Australia really has a pretty Pretty low population compared to everywhere else in the world, to be honest. But、uh, just to put that in perspective, made it home, guys, and I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you're excited for what's coming with the 350Z now that Okachan's getting on board and grabbing one or a couple. I don't exactly know how many he's gonna get yet, but he enjoyed it so much. And、uh, it's, it's crazy to think actually that, like, you know, back when Okachan had that fully Nismo sponsored Z and stuff and was doing a lot of time attack with it, he did do a little bit of drifting with it, but You can't really do much with the stock angle kit and how the knuckles were aluminium. And back then, they did try to weld knuckles and stuff like that. It just, they just could never get anything to work with the aluminium knuckles. So everyone just kind of gave up on the Z as a drift car. And now that you've got all these awesome parts from GK Tech, it's now viable to them again. And then it's all fresh in their brains again. And they want to start messing around with it because they never really got to. Because back then, they just never really thought of, I guess, doing bolt on mods like that. And I think as like CNC and Uh, CAD software and stuff like that progressed, you were able to do a lot of like 3D modeling on computers and stuff and take away all the, you know, the old school ways of trial and error and testing in RD. So I think that's why like things have progressed so drastically in the last five to 10 years on these kinds of cars. So it's really cool to see o k a c h a n super hyped about it and a lot of his friends and students all hyped about it as well. I really think, and I know you guys already know this because of other YouTubers and, you know, places like in the USA. 350Zs are like the go to drift car now, or you know, E36s and stuff like that. But in Japan, we don't really have that many E36s, and if they if we do, there's crazy expensive rare ones. So 350Zs are kind of plentiful, especially the old DE ones and the old Zenki ones. They're cheap, like you can get one for like six grand at the auctions and spend a couple grand on some GK Tech mods and go shred. So that's really encouraging for a lot of people that they can get a cheap drift car once again. So I'm excited for the future here in Japan. I know we're a little bit behind the curve there, but I hope you guys are still interested to see that progress over here and get even more crazy. I mean, Okachan's already talking about a HKS supercharger kit. So keep an eye out for that. Thanks for watching, guys. Smash that like button, raise the comment. Make sure you go check out Okachan's channel. Just search Yashio Factory on YouTube. Go check out his content. It's all in Japanese and rarely subtitles get put on it. But I think it's still cool for you guys to go check out what he's doing and watch some of his videos from time to time. I'm sure you'll still enjoy it. Anyways, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Peace. Ciao.